why people are anti-union. You know, there are a lot of anti-union people in the Planner Alliance. And if you get the opportunity to talk to them and ask them what their issues are, a lot of times it's, it's not even a real issue. It's a miscommunication or an outright lie that's been told to them that, that they've heard from supervision or from other people that have heard the same thing. Wayne here and I talked to somebody that was a hardcore anti-union person at the town hall meeting a while back. And his issue was that he didn't want us to organize because people that worked for General Motors that had supervision, uh, that had, uh, had uh, been there longer than we have, could come down and take our jobs. People that worked for a different employee could come down and take our jobs. And we explained it to him and you could see it's like a light coming out of his eyes. And he finally understood that they couldn't do that, but that's what he heard, that's all he heard. So we preach education so much. You know, this is something that's going to impact the rest of your life and your family and your community and history. And what is more important for you to get out and, and get educated about the matter? But a big part of it is just, just education. They don't understand. All they know is, is horror stories they heard from two generations ago, three generations ago, and that they're hearing from uh, people that don't want to get in here. Because, like you say, who, who controls that uh, communication here on the way into work? Uh, who, who can walk up and down that line when you're at work and whisper in your ear? You know, they're not free to walk up and down that line and talk pro union and all that long. That's all you hear if you hear anything from anybody, unless you're in a break area or protected somewhere. But whisper in your ear telling you, oh, this is going to be bad if this happens. Well, take the time to get out and get, get, get yourself educated. Instead of just taking whatever just happened to drift away. You know, it was interesting because it, it sort of shocked me when I when I, I did a tour today, and the tour guide uh, went through the whole plan, and they really try to emphasize the structure of the team and all this stuff. And you know, this guy, this, this very ecstatic PR guy. I remember one point we passed the gym, and he's like, "We have a gym here at the plant because we consider our workers industrial athletes." It's a very unusual phrase. I never heard that before. But it is very, very grueling work. Uh, but when we got down to the end of the plant, I said to myself, you know, uh, my mother worked at a Volkswagen plant in Westmoreland County. You know, closed down in the 80s. He said, oh yeah, that was the one that closed down because they brought in the union. Which, as a guy from like Pittsburgh, was completely shocked me because I hadn't met anybody who was anti-union until I moved away. And, you know, Reuters did a big story on it. You know, that plant didn't close because of the union. That plant closed because Volkswagen was trying to get into the American market and they had no idea how to do it. And they decided to introduce a two-door automobile called a Golf in the middle of the 1980s. And they didn't have an effective marketing strategy. And they blamed it on the union. And they kept laying off people. And then it was just crazy. But it was just, it kind of shocked me <coughs> that the guy not even knowing who I was Knowing that I was from it, though, you know, my mother had been a, a union member there. Said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 you know, this is a PR guy." Uh, folks went, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The union shut down that plant." <laughs> Quote him in your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like to echo what the brother said, Gary. Is you, Mike? Is uh, don't be the silent majority or the minority. You know, a lot of times it's uncomfortable. Byron, I like to thank God bless all y'all. Because it's easy to sit in your living room watching TV or at the park for your kids and think, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get on board with this union thing. It's going to be better. But to get out in the front of the public, when you know the Porkers, the Alexander, the Haslam, and who knows how many local politicians are against that, I commend each and every one of you for doing that. But for the rest of us that know better about the ignorances of the few that have the money to run the ads, don't, don't sit by silently. You have a voice. You're not going to speak as well as they do. Trust me. I'm an iron worker. I'm not a public politician. I'm not a public speaker. But if you tell them what's in your heart and what's in right, the truth will stand when all else fails. Amen. God bless everyone. Here to uh, support and to show my support. Uh, if anybody knows me, knows when I get to start talking, I can't shut up. So I don't really want to say anything here tonight. <laughs> I, I want to, uh, Brian knows this. Uh, two years ago, I stood up and, uh, at an all-team meeting and 
said what I had to say to the company, and I've had a target on my back ever since. Uh, I mean, you know, I want to be careful what I say here because it can be repeated. So, you know, I like my job. Uh, I've been there for almost three years. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad place. It's just that me, Byron, and some of the others in the plant feel like it would be a better place if we were organized and had a say in what happens around there. So you're the troublemakers. <laughs> well, you know, it's just the fact that, you know, I have had quite a few visits up to the what they call the spines. But, uh, you know, I, I just speak my mind. They can call me a radical or whatever they want to call me. It's just that, you know, when I see something wrong, it's just hard for me to keep my mouth shut. So there's obviously mm -hmm. some fear there. Oh, there's a lot of fear in the plant. Like uh, one of the uh, speakers said, you know, when you got somebody like a Jackson that, that comes into the plant there and he brings all of his cronies from, uh, you know, the transplants uh, of uh, Toyotas and Nissans, and they're all anti-union. Like you said, they go through all these, uh, you know, seminars for union busting. They don't want a union in there. I mean, the sentiment is in the plant. But it's filtered down from the supervisors to a lot of the team leaders that are on the floor. Not all of them, because there's a team leader right there. He's not like, like they are. But I mean, a lot of them are like that. And it's just, it's throughout the plant. And even with all of that, in the good old South, we've got the majority of the cards down there. And we're just waiting. We don't know. But there's just worker fear. I, there's, there, work, there's worker fear. I just, I, just like we participated in the, the uh, minimum wage protest just recently, you know, these workers are obviously afraid of getting out there. They so, are. And, and, I, we have, and we have supporters that are supporters, you know, you know, behind closed doors, so to speak. Because they're just afraid they don't want to target them with that. I wish our local unions would really rally together because the activists in this community, you know, we're all crazy anyway. So. Right. But the, the one I thing just, I, I, I stood up here to say, uh, again, I won't stop talking about what's No, but you should keep I, I've been working I've been working about, uh, uh, I mean, we're just trying to fill space. You actually have something to say. I've been working about uh, the West Dock doors and had that cold air blowing in my uh, throat all day long, so I can't hardly talk about it. But the main thing I want to stand up here to say, is that when the guy's talking about marching, I already feel like we're marching in a, in a sense because of the voices that we're hearing from uh, the Chattanooga workers, people. I don't know all your names, Patricia, Michael, uh, Tracy, Chris Brooks. Uh, thank you, Mike, for being here, and Gary, and, and Byron for giving this speech. I just thank all the support we have in this town. I had no idea that there was that many people in here that were on our side. I just want to, I just want to talk about that. Thank you. It's just that we've been told that, you know, there's certain things you shouldn't say that can get repeated. And, I, and I, again, I want to make sure you understand this. I'm not here to talk bad about the company. I want to make sure if anybody's recording this, I am not talking bad about the company. <laughs> you know, I like, B, I love BW. There, I've got some good friends in upper management that are in BW. But we just have a select few there that do not want this in the plant. They, they know what it is. They're going to lose their power. 